I hope that you had a, a good Mayuvka with good weather, with some walking perhaps around, but also that you found time to read the uh, uh, readings uh, which I uh, suggest for this uh, week, uh, which uh, will be our not last uh, meeting with my uh, introductory films, but uh, we will have next week another one, uh, and it will be the last one in, uh, when I will uh, introduce you to the topic uh, which will be also um, in the focus of attention of one of the presenters, uh, namely the role of higher education in uh, uh, shaping uh, fundamentalism or overcoming fundamentalism. But today uh, I will ask, uh, I would like to, to, to ask the very fundamental question connected with uh, our topic, namely, is clash of civilizations inevitable? In other words, uh, is the fundamentalism or fundamentalisms an inevitable outcome of uh, human uh, activities? Uh, and as a, a way to introduce the topic, I proposed you to read, or it, if not read entirely, in any way have a look at uh, two books, and uh, particularly through uh, uh, read this, uh, these books uh, via biography or taking into account who wrote them. Because, as you know, I'm, I'm convinced that uh, our ideas are rooted in our life experiences. Or better, what we do with these life experiences. If we are able to uh, work through some difficult uh, experiences, some dramatical or traumatic experiences, when we are able to go through, to overcome, to reflect upon, to understand it, so we will uh, not repeat the same mistakes of the past. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we see that uh, humanity learn uh, a little from the history and this uh, saying that mag historia magistra vita est is not uh, so true that we are not learning from history uh, but perhaps in the recent time uh, we see examples that we uh, in fact learn from history for example, that since the Second World War in Europe, we don't have a war because we remember too well what it means to enter in a battle one nation against another. Although we have local conflicts around the world, but nevertheless in Europe we try to, to avoid this escalation of, of conflicts. So in order to reflect uh, who is right, who is wrong, uh, I gave you two, two books. Uh, one is um, Samuel Huntington, um, uh, an American scholar, uh, political scientist and author of many important and influential books, who Huntington was based in Harvard almost all his life. And the book which I am interested in is uh, entitled The Clash of Civilizations, exactly like this, The Clash of Civilizations. And this book was published uh, um, in 1996. But what is important that three years earlier, uh, he published an essay exactly under the same title, The Clash, a Clash of Civilization, in a very important and uh, influential magazine of Harvard University, Foreign Affairs. As you know, Foreign Affairs is uh, important also for us Americanists. We have to read it regularly in order to know in which direction the politologist, uh, 
or political scientists uh, are going, how they analyze what is going on around us, etc. And this essay from 1993 was uh, the most uh, successful in a way, the, the most debated between the readers of foreign affairs, but not only, it makes its way also to uh, to newspapers, to media, and uh, so uh, Huntington decided to take into account all pro and contra voices, and then three years later published this extremely successful book, The Clash of Civilizations, which is uh, available, as you may know, in many languages, Polish, Polish included. So uh, why so? And uh, this is uh, my uh, interpretation, in, with which you can agree or not, uh, but it's good to have uh, an arguments for and against. So uh, my main uh, criticism toward Huntington is that he uh, depicted uh, our present uh, world as world in constant conflict. If we are not in the present moment in the war, uh, but it doesn't mean that this war could not happen in a few years because uh, we are a kind of a complex uh, of civilizations exactly of countries which are looking only for the occasion to attack one another and he mentioned uh, eight or so uh, different civilizations of course western civilization uh, buddhist civilization hindu civilization uh, Russia, Orthodox Russia, Islamic civilization. So a lot of, of different mm, uh, civilizations which are in constant war. And he can, and he found a lot of um, arguments which are supporting this uh, thesis. Uh, and uh, by the way, this idea of clash of civilizations is not new. Uh, there are some scholars who even claim that uh, he borrowed this idea from a uh, Polish historian um, and uh, historiographer uh, Felix Konieczny, who published uh, in the 30s, uh, so 60 years before Huntington, a, a book uh, entitled in Polish O Wielości Cywilizacji, or, uh, on plurality of civilizations, it was translated in the 60s into English in, in Great Britain. It could be that somehow Huntington was familiar with this, but he don't, uh, did not quote him in any footnote. But in any way, it was the idea already of Konieczny that uh, on, on Polish ground here in Central Europe, we have this variety of civilization, he mentioned the Jewish civilization, Ugrophenic civilization, Western Latin civilization. So according to, to Konieczny, it was a tension between them. He was using a less uh, aggressive term, not clash, but simply the variety of civilizations. So, so I invite you to, to have a look at uh, Hunt, uh, Huntington book. Perhaps you will find a lot of uh, reviews, uh, some critical appreciation, some uh, favorable uh, uh, reviews. Uh, but I think it, it is good to, to have present this book uh, of Huntington for our course in order to understand better uh, fundamentalism as a, as a civilizational uh, problem, so to say. Uh, after uh, Huntington published also a, a book on uh, who we are, on American identity in 2004, and in 2002 he contributed to um, a book uh, edited together with Peter um, Berger, a, social, a sociologist of religion, 
and entitled Many Globalizations, Cultural Diversity in Contemporary World. It is like uh, a little bit uh, uh, more nuanced. That is uh, not only one globalization, that you cannot see entire world only from the perspective of America, of the United States, but we have to take into consideration a different um, globalization, for example, in Asia, in China. So today we have a, a, a less uh, simplified image of, of this concept uh, of clash of civilizations, even by uh, Huntington him, mm -hmm. himself. Another uh, possible perspective, uh, less uh, known, it was elaborated by an Irish scholar. So on the one hand, we have a very prominent American scholar uh, who is considered as a brain behind American conservatism and American exceptionalism. And uh, some of his ideas were considered as the self-fulfilling prophecies. So since uh, conflict is inevitable, so why not to, to provoke these conflicts? And of course, I have in mind war in, uh, in uh, Kuwait uh, in the 90s and after the second war, uh, both conflicts uh, star inaugurated by Bush administration, senior and uh, junior. So this is perhaps for those of you who are interested in political uh, history, it could be a good uh, and interesting element for discussion how far intellectuals and ideas are influencing the uh, political world. So I don't have too much time, I don't want to be too long. So the, my second uh, book or my second author is this uh, Irish political scientist, Fred Halliday. Fred Halliday you will find uh, this book uh, uh, on the platform, uh, which I consider to, to have a look, is uh, the world of 2000. And you will see how different uh, um, Halliday uh, approach uh, the global problem, so Middle East. Uh, that he is more attentive to local narratives. The better book, and probably will be easier to compare with Huntington, Clash of Civilization, is his book published more or less in the same time, 1996, Islam and the Myth of Confrontation, but I was unable to find uh, a PDF uh, of this uh, book. Uh, I have uh, my Polish copy and perhaps in class I can tell you more about this. In any way, why, what is important that for, for Halliday uh, is very important to uh, look at the local uh, specific culture. And how you can look at local specific culture? You have to know it. You have to learn languages. You have to know Arabic, you have to know Persian, you, you have to know, you know, Greek. And in this way, uh, you will see that civilizations are not a result of constant conflict between them, but is the outcome of the constant process of mutual osmosis that you are entering in dialogue with one another. So instead of creating this image with horrifying image, apocalyptic image of constant uh, conflict between civilizations, it's better to look with more attentive eyes, ears, and to see that actually Islam is the result of uh, osmosis of many cultures, Christianity included, Greek philosophy included, far Zoroastrianism of Persian uh, empire uh, included. So if you are less uh, 
uh, lazy in, in uh, characterizing the, the, the global culture, you will discover how many elements we have in common. And scholars uh, of type uh, of Frev, Fred Halliday, we have many others. I don't have time to enumerate them, but this, uh, for example, uh, uh, Friedrich Barth, a Norwegian anthropologist who was also studying languages of, of uh, Afghanistan, of Persia, Iraq, and after he, he wrote that uh, the other civilization are result of constant uh, uh, and mutual enriching one another. So this is more or less uh, my, I hope, impulse for a discussion uh, this week. And I encourage you to, to bring to class your ideas and I am looking for exchange of these ideas.